I'm totally with you on using data as a tool to be able to say, what do people actually find most interesting or most engaging as a way to say, like, from what you're publishing, what is getting the most views, what's getting the most shares? And just to maybe to clarify there, is that the data you're talking about? Is this just kind of high level, maybe tractional, like directional data? Yeah, there's nothing like, you know, this isn't super complicated stuff. It's like one of your posts got 10 times more likes than the other nine. What does that tell you? Yeah. So there's that piece, which is clearly like once you're up and running and you're starting to publish on some consistent schedule, then you can use data to start to inform what you're doing. But it seems like you kind of have to be, you know, if this was a plane, have to be taken off already, be in flight, be moving, and then you can adjust the course of it by listening to that data. So for someone who isn't at that point yet, plane's still on the ground. They haven't even written their first post, let alone, you know, they're not writing consistently. Where does that person start? Because, you know, my understanding at least from the book is it's not with a blog. So I guess where is it or where would you suggest people start if somebody wants to write? Yeah, the big difference I explain is there's two environments on the internet. One is static being a blog, a website. So medium is actually the other side. The other side being it's social. There's users there. You're tapping into something that's there. So I would even make the argument that if you're strictly talking about writing and feedback loops and exposure, you actually are way better off. Say you're in like the restaurant space or the food space. You're way better off writing really unique reviews on Yelp than you are starting a blog because you're tapping into an environment that moves and it has people there. And and there's a component that will give you feedback on what you're doing. If you're just starting a site, especially if you're just an average person who doesn't have a lot of digital marketing expertise, no one knows you exist. There's no way for you to get any of that feedback. So if you're just starting, step one, pick a social environment. Does not matter what it is, just needs to already have users on it, not a blank site. And then step two is like, well, what's your goal? What are you trying to talk about? Start, don't sit there and strategize for six months because no matter where you end up, you're still guessing. You're still just subjectively thinking, this is what I believe people want. And you're far better off just moving that plane, push it, get some sort of momentum, and then use that data to inform the next step and the next step. For someone who wants to write, but for them, writing is more about kind of clarifying their own thinking. I'm guessing that probably is totally different. Then maybe it's okay to write on a static site and it's less important on social. I guess, what would you say to that person? (laughs) This, the nuances of this are hilarious. This is a side note, but what's hilarious to me, right, is there's a whole subset of people that go, I want to write on my own terms. I want to do what I want to do. I want to write the way I want to write. But if I don't get the result that I want, I'm going to be upset. And it's, you got to pick and choose. And I still, even to your point, someone who wants to clarify their thinking, writing is an incredible way of doing that. But a better way of doing that is to get feedback. Like if you put out an opinion and all of a sudden, a ton of people either vehemently disagree with you or excitedly praise you. There's something there that feedback's going to tell you something. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I One of my biggest, biggest lessons in however, 10, 15 years of just writing on my own, do not write in a vacuum. Do not sit in your room and hide it away in your journal and be like, I will wait five years until it's perfect to reveal it to the world. You have to be finding some sort of way to practice in public. Otherwise, you are losing and you are falling behind all the other people that are using data. So it's more like an active collaborative process where it's actually you with the audience or you with people that are listening or people that care about what you have to say. And then you're seeing what they really react to. And then that's maybe giving you some data points about what you should expand on in the future. Does that kind of summarize that? 100%. And to push that further, and this is just the reality, people that don't like that, and people that push against that or think, no, that's not the way to do it, I find overwhelmingly it's because it's rooted in fear. They are afraid to test that in public. They are afraid to get that feedback. And so what they do is they hide it away and they wait for the big, 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 big launch. And they wait for a publisher or whoever to be like, I validate this person knows what they're talking about. They mitigate all their risk and then they put it out and then no one reads it. So what do you really want? Yeah, I guess then you build it up and you only get one data point as opposed to getting a ton of little data points along the way and kind of guide it. Exactly. 